Ah, yes, good to see y'all. Kren, Branch, Eyes, Octal. Welcome, everybody, and everyone welcome watching After the Fact, welcome as well. We are here in the Sunday Spotlight, and tonight we are playing Serious Sam's Bogus Detour. Now, I'm a real big fan of the series, but I have not played a lot of the spin-off games by the uh, third party, de party developers. This is, I believe, by a uh, developer called Crackshell, which is working in conjunction with Crow Team. This is rather unique in that it's a top-down version of the uh, standard Twitch shooter stuff, where you basically just go into room, kill a whole lot of things, move to the next room, occasional light puzzle solving and such. It's rather uniquely presented. This one kind of just throws you right into it. It's kind of... I mean, the Serious Sam canon isn't really, uh, something to take seriously. All you know is you're going through a lot of exotic locations, killing a whole bunch of aliens that are bent on conquering Earth. Beyond that is not especially critical to know. It, yeah, that, that's the thing. There are actually quite a few. There was this one, there's, I think, the Random Encounter. Uh, the, I want to say there's maybe about three or four. In addition to the mainline games of First Encounter, Second Encounter... Uh, BFV, which is before First Encounter, the third game, and then Serious Sam 4. It, it, like I said, they jump around in time, and the story is simultaneously kind of perfunctory, but also there's a... Uh, like, in the most recent one, they actually put a fair bit amount of effort into it, and had, like, some fun characters that were following you around and, like, doing, like, a wisecracking competition. It's, it's a little hard to ex summarize without making it sound less well done than it is. But anyway, let's get to it. This one kind of just throws us right into it. This is somewhere in the vein of the first one, since we're g still going through, like, the ruins of the ancient world. Uh, yeah, no fun opening cinematic. We're kind of just thrown right into it, so we're somewhere in Egypt. Alexandria, I believe. Yeah, here we go. After a hard-fought battle, you finally reach the Temple of Ptah here in Memphis. The artifact of... Uh, uh, bleh, the artifact of Amon ra should be up on the altar ahead. Grab it, we'll continue north. We need to find out why there's so many mental troops coming from the direction of Alexandria. They seem to be fairly organized. Since you're wounded, see if you can find some health nearby. So yeah, the plot, such as it is, is that an eel alien called Mental attacked the Earth in the future, and Sa Sam here went back into the past to basically preempt the invasion because it found, turns out the stuff basically we found like a stargate that helped us get to the uh, get, you know get gets into space and such but it's kind of played in a very breezy not at all serious kind of way and this discovery exposed Earth to mental and the fact that he was basically conquering the universe. So it's kind of a... Of all things, it's kind of a homeworld situation. So, yeah. Earth is kind of fucked. So we're going back in time to activate ancient Syrian technology who was basically kind of like ancient aliens on Earth. And this spin-off game kind of takes place in that very, very breezy context. So, yeah. You can see we are controlling... Broadly similar to the to the original games, <laughs> Earth kind of fucked anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somehow it gets even more so, if you can believe that. That's kind of the interesting thing about Serious Sam 4, that they finally kind of dig into like Earth's whole situation and have some real sense of what's actually happening on Earth with the invasion and what Earth's response is to it. Because, yeah, the broader plan is just activating this time travel device so we can go back in time, find a way to preempt the invasion, and, of course, they send Sirius Sam to do it. But we're about, like, four games into the main canon, and, like I said, maybe four or five spin-off games. We still haven't actually fought Mental or even seen Mental, so it's just kind of a... It is... Not something to take seriously. Oop, thank you, Kirby. Don't mind if I do. Anyway, uh, let's see. So, yeah, this is our Natrixa, which is kind of an information database. So, this tells us a little bit about the creatures. So, these are creatures that feature prominently in the main game. So, you got the little frog things here, the marsh hoppers. And there's this, like, rather elaborate information database that talks about these creatures that are coming from all over the universe to fight us here. So yeah, the Nar originate from Sirius and are trained by Mental to attack opposing forces with great ferocity. The males are purple and not as quick as the more lightly colored and stronger females. 
the frogs here are just kind of like these kamikaze swarm critters. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of that old Half-Life 2D game, but it wasn't canon. Yeah, exactly. Shotgun. Here we go. Guns. This is what I'm used to. All right. I do believe they have the voice of the original. Uh, do, they do have the original Serious Sam voice. Uh, his name is escaping me at the moment. I apologize. Anyway, so yeah, this is the whole. This is the whole thing of the Serious Sam games. It's just throwing you in a room with a large swarm of critters, and you're just constantly backpedaling and dealing with them, trying to thin them out, and prioritizing high value. To, like high threat targets while trying to stay ahead of the increasingly elaborate projectile spam that comes your way. It gets almost bullet hell especially on the higher difficulties. And you're you're basically just acting like Jackie Chan with guns. You're just constantly trying to deal with an increasing swarm of enemies by taking out the most immediate problems as you gradually thin the herd. So yeah, one difference from the main games is that we actually do have a dodge roll here, whereas the main games are just first-person shooters and you're just running around normally. So one thing to note, the dodge roll does not convert iframes. You are not invincible, do not dodge into enemies, it's mostly just a way to quickly get out of the jam. As you can see here, we are whittling them down. Now, let's start this adventure for real. So yeah, that's all tutorial basically just like a tutorial so now we get out into the yard here yep, what do we got here okay orcs the alien species known as zorg started losing their skin due to intense solar radiation of the home planet's glowing red sun they began experimenting on themselves to get it back using chemical compounds and toxic fluids though though as it turned out their skin didn't come back like before Instead, they were mutated. They turned green, grew larger, and became even more disfigured. Their distinct features gave them the name of orcs in an attempt to separate them from the still unaffected skinless Zorg population. Eventually, the mutagenic ooze, blah blah blah, etc. This is basically a. Yeah, it's kind of. There's a lot of black comedy in how the other aliens are presented and why they're here. There's usually some, like, elaborate backstory. Sometimes they're very silly, sometimes they're, like, stone serious. It's a very interesting mix. Anyway, yeah, we this is just telling us we gotta find a key card. It's like... It's a very interesting tone. And then, oop, what's this? Here we go. In that it's very... It's elaborate, but also it doesn't want you to take it very seriously. It, it's largely an excuse plot to say, here's a bunch of aliens, they're running around a bunch of exotic locations for some reason, just kill them all. And the original engine was it capable of doing some really impressive uh, lighting effects and engine effects. And it did a really good job handling large numbers of creatures on screen. Like, it, it, the signature element of the game is just the sheer scale of the battles you fight on. I... I I forget exactly how big his kill count gets. The what I what I read once was that he personally killed something in the order of forty-seven thousand creatures across all his various spin-off games. And, and yeah, you, you will have and by the end of the game, you will have killed enough beings to basically constitute a one-man war crime in a good way, though. So yeah, we're gonna be. Hey, Orange! <laughs> Good to see you. We have not encountered those guys yet. I'm pretty sure we won't be too much longer. But yeah, that's one of the uh, other signature. Uh, uh, that's one of the other signature creatures of the game. The beheaded kamikazes. Like it's. There's a curious amount. Laser cannon. I don't know what slow light is, but I know it's powerful. <laughs> Uh, Sam's just an absolute meathead. It's great. Anyway, so yeah, this is a curious consistency in the uh, creatures you come across, and that some are actually manufactured, like like the standard troops in the first game were like beheaded Syrian soldiers that mental repurposed for his armies, and that they actually carry their own severed heads. 
which are remotely autonomous. It's it's really and you know there's, there's like an entire variety of troops with uh, different functions in combat and such, and you know they're, they're designed to be cannon fodder anyway. But there's a lot of little things like that that separate it from other games like this, where it's it, it's stuff that would be kind of like horrifying if the science fiction was being played straight. But this is deliberately very breezy and very lighthearted in tone, and it's just treated as one more thing you gotta kill to get to the end of the level. Anyway, uh, we got the key card onto this. Okay, uh, yes, yes, yes. Laser cannon. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah. A little surprised they gave that to us early. Alright, look around for more weapons and ammo. Can't do. Who are you guys? Okay, nope, we got, we got kamikazes. There they are. That's one of the other signature enemies in the game, the Beheaded Kamikazes. Those are troops whose heads were not usable, and the, the, the backstory behind them is that their heads were not usable as a control unit, so they just wired them up with bombs and then they just run towards you. And the whole thing is just you can hear them from way, uh, like a ways off, so you'll actually have like a Doppler effect as they're running around, and you use that to sort of detect where they are by sound because, you know, you, you're only capable of looking in because, yeah, enemies will be attacking from all sides so you have to listen for audio cues in the heat of battle and figure out, okay, is something close to me I need to deal with right now? Yep, here we go. So, yeah, the kamikazes are especially dangerous, but, as you might expect, they are also potentially a liability for the enemy. So yeah, these are executed Syrian soldiers, fitted with bombs instead of heads. They're kept alive by an added life control unit, a very dangerous foe. It's not entirely clear how they're able to scream as they come at you, but those are questions that are just best off not answered. Now, uh, let's see. So I'm not sure, I'm assuming the sunglasses are an extra life. I should right. probably avoid this green stuff. Good thinking, Sam. Actually, let me see. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it'll, you know, maybe it'll generate superpowers. Maybe it's that kind of toxic waste. All right. So I'm not sure what this is about. Nice little level of environmental destruction. In fact. Oh boy, okay, what's this? Okay, the ooze can be very volatile and sometimes come alive by itself. It will poison whatever it hits for a while. Okay, mutated enemies that are, are infected will target everyone that isn't mutated. Interesting, okay. So maybe we can use this on the enemy somehow. Uh, I'm guessing we'll probably have to find another way in there somehow. Although, hang on a second. Can we do this? Sometimes the secrets in these games can be a little di- Oh, why do I have fists? I mean, you know, I, I obviously would have fists, but why is that, why is that a weapon? Okay, oh, we got clears. These are another example of enemies that use a lot of sound in their design, because you can hear them galloping from a pretty far ways off, and you're going to be doing a lot of dodging of them, because they use a lot of charge attacks. So it's one more thing you're going to be keeping an eye, uh, keeping an ear out for. And again, oop. oh boy, okay. Oop. But yeah, a big thing with the Serious Sam games is just their overall solid design. That oh, we level up, nice. Is that they're ultimately very simple in that you have one objective only, and it's basically to kill everything in the room. But within that narrow context, they do a lot of smart things to give the player... To, to clearly communicate what they want the player to focus on, what they're capable of doing, what enemies are... how enemies behave. 
There's a lot of good visual cues in the design of the enemy that tell you intuitively what to expect, and they gradually ramp up the threat that each enemy poses. So far, at least, it looks like that translates pretty well to a top-down format, because, yeah, you're having enemies behave identically. And you have the added benefit that you only have to worry about a 2D plane. And you can freely see around you. So I'm guessing they're going to compensate by throwing a larger number of enemies at you. Anyway, what's this about leveling up? Okay, interstellar tele-destination. Power. In this case, the solar panel gives it the strength to receive shipments from a very long distance, usually off-world. Mental Altana use these to, uses these to deliver troops from planet to planet. Exactly strange to find these, on, these here on Earth. I wonder what this means. Okay, after a while, Commander will stop sending troops to their death, but you can destroy this, this uh, the destination altogether by breaking the solar panel. Got it. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, what's this about upgrades? Here we go. Okay, so... So, we got kind of a perk system here. So, yeah. We'll buy, hit, and run. That sounds very useful. That's something that was introduced in Serious Sam 4, and I don't know if it played all that much in the spin-off games or what, but it was kind of the first main game that experimented with having perks and such you could unlock through progression. Most of the time, the games don't really ben like, like need that. It's kind of just like a fun extra. Most of your progression is just in finding an exotic new weapon. Or just a new enemy to deal with. But as mentioned, from the third game onward, they've gotten a little bit more narratively involved. Again, always in kind of a tongue-in-cheek sort of way. It's never truly slapstick, but it's made very clear that it's mostly not to be taken seriously. And I feel like they actually kind of hit their stride with uh, Serious Sam 4, that they found the right tone where they could say that the, world, the end of the world is happening, but mostly everybody's just having a good time killing aliens. And, like, you'll run across people out in the field that, like, randomly join you in combat, and they're just out there kicking ass in their own way. And it, it, it's... They make it very, very clear that even though Earth is under attack, it's not the end of the world. And it honestly had a pretty satisfying ending. I was, I was pretty happy with how that game ended up. One bit in uh, when you're in Rome and you're trying to get to the Vatican, and you know there's a huge swarm of enemies there, and you run across this little old lady. And Sam's initially like, "I'll take care of this," and then she's like, "Ah, don't worry about this, Sonny. I've seen this kind of thing before." And then she busts out a fucking minigun and actually covers you from the balcony, and just she's just raining absolute hell on there and helping you cross the the uh, bridge to get to the Vatican. It's awesome. Anyway, uh, right. Probably pretend to pay attention to what's going on here. Okay, backstory. So, yeah, if you want to get into the elaborate canon of the Serious Sam universe, you can go through here. Yeah, Matrixa, that's just kind of our information thingy. Uh, let's see. Mission. Okay, follow the road toward Alexandria. Continue north, we follow the road, we should be set. Got it. I do appreciate that bodies appear to be static here. Honestly, that's half the fun of getting through one of these major fights. It's just seeing the absolute carnage you've unleashed. As environments get destroyed and just like a pile of corpses left all over. I think the body is actually despawned eventually just to save on horsepower. Eek. 
But yeah, there will be like massive blood, blood stains and like stuff's destroyed. There are always very clear signs of your passage after you've had a fight. It's just... You simultaneously feel like... Oh, interesting. Okay, so spike floors, we need to find a way to get past that. Interesting. You, simultane you simultaneously feel very mortal and that, yeah, if you're misjudging the enemy, they will overwhelm you. But also, it, the games are great at just making you feel like an absolute badass and you've just taken out... You, you're basically taking out the entire alien invasion by yourself. It's great. Okay, uh... What's this about? Do I shoot it? Yes! Oh shit, okay. Oh shit, okay. Oop. All right. Good job, Sam. Okay, do I keep shooting you? Yes! This is how Sam interacts with all things. If he doesn't understand it, he's just gonna blow it up. Ah, teleporter. Hey, look at that. Nice. Now. That is probably a damaging floor. Should be very careful about it. Ow. Oh, it's a reversal floor. Shit. Alright, cool. Now, can I teleport back? No, that'd be too easy. Onward! Alright, we got a spike floor there. What looks like the... Oh, it's a Tommy gun. Oh, hey! Keep sending him. I need to build my score up. Now, uh... Alright, that's a big health thing. Excellent, excellent. Ah, good. Hey! That's something you get used to very quickly in these games. Is that anytime you see a health pickup or a weapon pickup, you need to expect that the game's just gonna spawn in enemies just to fuck with you. Now, it's not always the case, but what'll often happen is you'll come to an, like, a mostly empty room that has, like, a single power-up in it, and it'll just be something fairly trivial. It'll be, like, a single point of health or something. This'll certainly speed things up. And you pick that up, and you'll just have a shit ton of enemies pour in at you, doing way more damage than the health pickup was worth. Ah, we're talking. Yes! Looking good, looking good. Oh, hell. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Grunt. Yeah, yeah! If I do, state five, use four. Okay. Yeah. A lot of things will be getting in close. We'll make a good use of that. All right. Minefield, huh? Okay, this is how they keep us from wandering around too much. Ow! Or not, okay. Actually, hang on a second. Can I blow those up? Okay, I can. Alright. So yeah, that's something that was... That showed up in the fourth game, where... It was a way to designate the areas out of bounds without having to put a wall up there. So you couldn't actually pass it. In this case, it looks like you're kind of meant to. So, let's take a look. Okay, green key card, I'm assuming that's important. Launcher. Yes! Fire and forget! But let's not forget the quest. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Alright. Green keycard, good. I haven't actually seen the green 
door yet, but I'll assume that's somewhere around here. How many rockets do I have anyway? Ten. We'll want to save that. What's this? Okay, orcs use their multi-mission aircraft to drop in reinforcements via laser-guided pods. Make sure not to stand beneath them. Got it. Okay. Power cells. Okay, user controls doors and various traps. Strength of power cells is displayed by the amount of blue cells on top. Okay. Hey. Okay, yep, we got drop pods. Ow. Alright, this is the last outpost before Alexandria. Alright. Gate to Alexandria is on the other side of the space. You should clear it out, gather all the ammunition and other supplies you can you can carry. Very good advice. Always, always, always look around for power-ups and things off the beaten path. There's always only one way forward. But there are very often side areas where you can get extra stuff. And while you do need to be wary of traps... Ow. Actually, can I navigate these without having to shoot them? I think I can. Nice. Easy does it. Easy does it. Hey, look at that. This feels like a room where bad guys are going to spawn. Yep, I knew it. I Here we go again. Yes. I'm wise to your tricks, game. You only have to have that. You only have to have it happen. Bleh, I can't even talk anymore. You only have to have it happen once to just get a gut feeling for when the game's gonna try to sucker punch you. Ooh, double barrel shotgun! Hell yeah! Boom stick! Huh. Double barrel, double trouble. Nice, nice, nice. Well, not the most satisfying shotgun out there. It is a reliable... It, it, it's the kind of gun where you can very much tell how much you're going to need to deal with an enemy. Most of the most common enemies will go down with one shot. Larger ones might need two, and so on. Does exactly what you would need a video game shotgun to do. Right, anything over here? There was another minefield. Now this looks like an actual no-go area. So, what happens if I cross it? Okay, yep, death field, never mind. That's less creative, I'm a little disappointed. No, no, that, that's something the original game did as well, just kind of to simulate. Okay, don't go too far out. Because, yeah, you're in the middle of a desert, dummy. Alright, uh, let's see, mines, actually, they blow themselves up in their mines. I think they did. Alright. Oh yeah, give me all that stuff. What happens if I break these? Oh, those are red barrels. Right. Good to know. But yes, these games are very much not about having any kind of... These are, these are not about having any kind of enriching narrative experience. These are about the simple joy of killing a whole lot of things that bleed real good when you shoot them. And, you know, some of them don't even have that. The clears are just skeleton horse things. But there's a simple joy of just firing rockets into a crowd of bad guys and watching the whole thing just fall apart. Or gradually whittling out, whittling, whittling away at a horde with a minigun or so on. <laughs> Enter the gungeon without the lower graphics and a named IP and right on the Exactly. 
And yeah, that's that's another thing I really like about it. It's just how colorful these games are. And how easy they are on the eyes. Because yeah, you're very often going to exotic locations. Like the first game was set in ancient Egypt. The second encounter went to uh, like ancient uh, Mesoamerica, like South American, yeah, ancient South American ruins and Mesopotamia. Oh, okay. Oh. Third game went back to Egypt. Oh boy, okay. Alright, that control reversal thing is no joke. It takes you by surprise. Oh, got me. Alright. Okay, well, pay, pays to pay attention. Alright, now would be a good time for the rocket launcher. But yeah, it's the kind of games where if you've ever looked at some big open area and thought it'd be cool to have a gunfight there, that's the kind of experience it's going for. Now, uh... Oh, hey. Hey, look at that. I'm assuming that will be critical to progression. Uh -huh. Nice and easy now. Careful, Those careful, walls, careful. They seem fragile. Do they now? Thank you, Sam. Ow. that up. Very good, very good. Some tea here. Ah, ready Roo. Alright, cool. Five hundred and fourteen. Not a bad start. I think we can get uh, four digits before the end of the stream. Next next uh, mission. All right, public library number one. Let's take a look. All right, city of Alexandria is a huge city that board borders the Mediterranean Sea and houses the giant the giant Great Library as well as their impressive lighthouse. From what I've learned, Mental has one of his commanders stationed in the city. His name is Major Stinger, who's leading the alien forces here in northern Egypt, and has taken up residence inside the library. You should head there and try to reason with him. With bullets, presumably. Oh, if this ends up with us being the ones that blow up the Library of Alexandria, that will just tickle me pink. Oop. Oh, uh, pardon us. Not used to having civilians running around in these. I wonder if there's going to be some actual story to this. They kind of did that in the second game to, let's say, oh, uh oh. All right, we got bulls. Tommy gun. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Yeah, it, as I was saying, Serious Sam 2 kind of tried to have this, like, galaxy-spanning adventure where you're actually going to, like, alien worlds and trying to set the action scenes in the middle of these actual populated areas with, like, people you were trying to save, and occasionally they would actually, like, grab weapons and help out. It was very cartoony, very... 
very, uh, like the characters were all like super deformed and tiny, except for Sam himself. The jokes didn't always work, it was kind of... It, it tried a little too hard to be jokey, and they didn't quite always land. Now, I still overall like the game, but there were compromises made with the levels, and the overall enemy count was lower. But they did have some novel things, like there some novel additions to the weapons, like they had these parrot guided bombs, like guided bombs that were carried by parrots to your enemies, occasionally in vehicle sections and such. Occasionally they do fun experiments with the series, which I kind of like. Doesn't always pay off, but I have definitely the series, I have a strong fondness for the series, even through its uh, even through its rougher entries. Anyway, uh... So yeah, I'm guessing I'm gonna need a yellow key card for that, or to find an alternate way in. Pardon me, folks. Just here to collect your rocket power-ups. Hey, what's this? We got... Yeah. I forget exactly what those were. They were in the third game. Uh, let's see. Okay, and, and Terrace and Spider. Okay, Siri. So wearable, anti-community sensor mine. Uh, let's see. State of their weaponry, fairly visible, targets everything and everyone. It's said to be a manufacturing issue. Hmm. Right. What if, uh, what's this? Find the red key guard. North of here, try looking around the harbor area by the lighthouse. Got it. Actually... Huh. Minimap, that's new. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, how did I miss this? Cannon! Most powerful weapon known to man. I think. They're giving this to us early. This is a cannon. It does exactly what you think it does. Nice. So yeah, big thing with the cannon is it can bowl through several enemies at once in a line. So it's very good once you bunch a whole bunch of enemies up to just fire off a charge, a charge shot, and let it clear the way. It actually bounces around a little bit before it finishes. Does it? Just pull the trigger and wave the damn thing around. It'll sort it out eventually. And we did get a sledgehammer. Let's try that on a few of these guys. I'm kind of hoping that'd be a one-hit kill. It does not appear to be. Maybe there are upgrades that would help. Anyway. Back to guns. Take that, solar power. Damn future technology brought the aliens to Earth. I'll show them. Uh, we are definitely getting into some. Oh boy. Okay, yeah. We're, we're in my cannon. Bit crowded.
see what we got here. What's this? Tough as nails, maximum health is increased, maximum armor, effectiveness of ammo, dash recharge, movement speed, weapon free. Pistols more rapidly, bullets ricochet off walls, hey! Shotguns will fire with less spread. Yeah, you know what, let's do that. Gotta upgrade Mr. Shoddy. Talk about this. All right. Sure we're all full line. Actually, cells is probably use that. Oh dear. Okay. These endlessly spawn enemies. Looks like they stopped. Oh good, plenty more where that came from. That's full of bad guys, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> well, think of it this way. They're going to try to lead their shot. They're, they're, you know, they're going to try to lead you with their shots. So if I dodge into the direction the missile's already going, they'll never see it coming. That's how AI targeting works. I think the ones that do rocket launchers ac actually do uh, do that box of death thing, where they will fire one directly at you and then one off to the side, where they're basically trying to sweep you toward the intended to uh, target. That was something rather notoriously done a lot in Unreal. It's a clever trick. What the hell? I'm not even touching this door. I really gotta get a new mouse. Alright, I do believe this is where we are meant to. Oh boy, okay. Away, motherfucker! Ow. Alright, I had that coming. Damn it. Okay, blue key card. Hey, there it is. Ow. Right, we're gonna have to play a little more cautiously here. What is that? Is that looks like some was actually attacking the team. Interesting. Okay. Blue key card. Got it. Uh, anything here? There's probably a path through there. Maybe on the other side. I blow up these trees. Damn it. been denied arboreal destruction. I'm just gonna take it out on these guys. Right. Yep. Just blow up everything. 
Alright, I'll take that. Thank you. Special in here. Yes. Oh, let's deal with that problem before it becomes a serious problem. Oi. Damn it. Screw you to arbitrary range. Actually, wait, your rocket should go that far. Hey, there we go. Bit of a waste, but what the hell. Now we need the green key card for that. Very well. That is probably going to be over here. Alright. That looks like a room full of trouble. And of course it's just going to pop in too. Why not? You know what? Let's try this toxic thing. Let's see if it'll go after them. No, it's gonna go after me. Damn it. Hey, it is. Check it out. Didn't do any damage. Hey, there they go. Go get them. <laughs> okay, that's clever. I like that. Oh, thank you, Kirby. Gotta have your tea when you're saving the world. Now, okay, it's another one of them. Shoot it and a whole bunch of hurt pops in. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Not quite as effective as I hoped, but you know. Slow him down. So we can use area of effect to our advantage. It's helpful to know. It's glorious, isn't it? <laughs> Alright. There we go. Alright. Still a lot of them in there. That's concerning. There we go. <laughs> Alright. I mean, I could just go in guns blazing, but why? Nope, nope. That's coming after me. We don't want that. Come out and play! <laughs> blood for the blood god, exactly. Alright, we got fish spearmen. Ooh, ooh the minigun. Minigun! You know what? I can use this one to draw! <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are we doing on ammo for that? Oh, we got plenty. Actually, hang on a second. I see those cannonballs. Ow. Worth it. Alrighty, Roo. Red key card. Bullets. Out of the way, citizens. Actually, hang on a second. Is there anything over here? Oh, shit. Ah, that's the stuff. Oh, yeah, we're gonna want to resolve this before going any further. Alrighty-roo. Ah, 
good. Actually, do they have their own ammo pool? Looks like they do not. That's alright. Actually, did that thing say anything about them? Blah, blah, blah. Infected fish. Uh, there we go. Hmm. Okay, so blue, blue crabs actually will attack. Interesting. Alright, what do we got here? Out of the way, crabs. Huh. Hey! Anything for that? No. Nothing but the joy of murder. But to be quite frank, is its own reward. Alright. Alright. Very good. Oh, of course, we got more of these things. Round them up and rack them up. Almost there. One fun thing the games will sometimes do is they'll put you in a big room for a fight and they'll drop a health meter that looks like it's going to be a boss, but it's actually the number of enemies that you have to fight all of a sudden. So you'll have like a horde of those little frogs or like a bunch of these guys and the boss meter is just killing all of them. So yeah, that one encounter will have something like several hundred. Okay, come on, stop doing that. But yeah, the health meter will just be clearing out a room for bad guys. This is very much a game that just wants you to revel in the carnage of killing a whole bunch of things. You're not leaving the room until you're the only thing left standing in it. Oh, yeah! Skeletons? More like Skeleton! Now then, uh, I did see a few of those guys out here. Pardon me, citizens. Excellent, excellent. Anything else up here? No, it doesn't look like... Oh, yes. the adoring public. Alright, uh, let's grab that. Ow, 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 ow. Actually, wait, that was a red door. Oh, yes, give me all that ammo. 
literally cannot have too much. Uh, let's see. Enter the library, find the commander. Got it. That looks important. Actually, hang on a second. Can I open this? Nope, I need the green key card. Which is probably going to be behind this door. a lot of nice visual cues here. You'll know that the crosshair changes depending on what weapon you're looking at. And this is something that goes back to the original games, but you'll act it's actually the color changes depending on the health of them, so you have a pretty good idea of how close you are to killing the thing. So again, it's not a game series where there's going to be a lot to it. But it's all generally well designed, and it succeeds at the simple goal of being a satisfying Twitch shooter series. Just strictly designed to challenge your reflexes and create a fun environment and some novel enemies in which to test them. There's a lot of blood on the ground. Doesn't look like it. There is curiously, curiously untainted. Oh well, we'll just break some stuff. I kind of like. We actually passed by this door earlier, so there's kind of a nice central location that we've been working towards all this time. So you don't necessarily have to make an exhaustive search for every enemy or every item, but it's generally good policy. Alright, I think we're ready to take on this commander here. Nice attention to detail. Yeah, you can see here I can actually fire into these and just destroy the. We're literally destroying the. We are destroying the library at Alexandria. <laughs> okay, this is great. Oh, man. This is just like when he blows up the Sphinx at Cairo in 3. And you know, there's a whole thing where they're trying to solve some riddle. Like, you know, his... The guys in his earpiece are like, Okay, the Sphinx is the key. We need to solve some riddle to get you under there so we can activate the time lock. And he's like, Or I could just grab some C4 and blow it up. <sighs> These games rule. This is exactly the kind of stuff, part of me, that it will be... 15 until the day I die really appreciates. 
Thank you. Sip of tea there. One rather nice thing is... While there are weapons that are better suited for certain situations, there's nothing that's especially vulnerable to anything, with very rare exceptions. You're free to use whatever weapons you like. It's entirely possible to bring down some of the hardest enemies in the game with the pistols and some fancy footwork. And it's all kind of about which weapon you want to use to deal with which situation. Like, yeah, if you're up against a horde of enemies incoming, you might want rockets to just maximize the splash damage and then switch to your minigun. Or, you know, use your laser, or in some, weapon, some games you get a flamethrower or a sniper rifle. Nothing about it is terribly a surprising arsenal, with the exception of the cannon, but it's all very intuitive and it's all about what ammo you've managed to save up for the occasion. Pardon me, pardon me. Sorry about your library. Kinda trying to thwart an alien invasion here, I'm sure you understand. But yeah, these are games just about the simple joy of killing a whole bunch of alien bastards that dared to set foot on Earth. And they make the most of that. Okay, we got a big in here. Oh yeah, this is the boss. Alright. Ah, yeah, 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 okay. Oh, damn it, he's checking his Twitter feed. Oh no, he's calling it an airstrike. No, he's calling it dudes. Did you just shoot his own dudes? <laughs> Ooh, hey, what's this? Small pack. Okay, it was probably ammo. Damn it! Alright. Now, of course I run into the uh, frickin' minigun damage field. Ow. Alright, so that is just kind of a general ammo pack. Alright, half dead. Got me once. Ain't gonna let it happen again. Major, more like minor. <laughs> Thank you. All right, there's a ship leaving for Greece in the harbor. You should catch it. Awesome. I hear tell Greece is the word. Now, uh, anything else in here before I boogie on out of here? That presumably is just a taste of things to come. The bosses in Serious Sam can get absolutely massive. Like we're talking things that are building size just coming at you and 
Other than the, the, it works with the sheer scale of the levels that these things are operating at. That's you're frequently traveling across very large distances, which are often conducive to very sustained firefights. But yeah, you'll come across bosses that are just absolutely tower over you. And usually at the very end, you'll have one that towers above all of them. Like in the... In Serious Sam 4, they actually had this, like, kind of attack on Titan thing, where you're, like, slinging around one. Like, the boss itself was part of the architecture, because you're climbing on it and attacking its weak points, and it's got platforms on it you have to actually run around and keep fighting on. All while this massive battle is happening all around you. It's awesome. Sail away! In the third one, they give you a jetpack, and you're, like, sticking it with, like, these lightning rods. They usually come up with something really creative for the end of each one. Aw, oh, so we're just a little bit short of a thousand kills. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, holding backwards and right mouse button. Yeah. Or left mouse button, as it is. But, yeah. Alright. Path of Feast slash Fear. Let's take a look. Good to see you, Mirage. We're wrapping up shortly. But anyway, uh, you're lucky to be alive, Sam. That storm was awful, but this is certainly not Greece. You're stranded in what looks like it would be Turkey in our modern day, somewhere south of the city of Troy. There appears to be an orc base near the city border up north. Maybe we can find another way to travel to Greece from there? The storm took all your weapons, but there were some wooden crates on the ship that's probably beached nearby. It might be something useful in them. Uh, of course. Every now and then, you'll come up to a section where you have to start your arsenal from scratch. Although this is unique in that we don't even have our guns. So yeah, I was wondering why they have your fists as melee weapons, and now I know. You know, I'm gonna push some crabs, why not? Take that, crabs. Alright, go out there and check those crates. Got it! Hey, right. sledgehammer. This is just what I need. Excellent, excellent. No, those get to live. Let's see what we can expect out here. Ow! Oh, they did attack me! Motherfucker! I mean, I probably stepped on one, and that's what caused damage. Oh boy! Okay, we have a giant turtle. Tonight, I dine on turtle soup! Alright, what's this thing's story? Okay. Unlike the fish that somehow grew legs, these creatures grew spikes in their shell and developed a very strong bite. So it's an infected tortoise. When stressed out, they'll start to spin and shed the spikes from their body, sending them flying, trying not to get impaled. Okay, so they're just, they're basically Gamera, but they don't fly. And not the fire. Fantastic. Playing whack-a-mole with turtles. Oh shit, ow. Oh god, okay. So they appear to be immune to the toxic stuff. That's a problem. So much for using that offensively. Dig at the soundtrack. These games usually have a good mix of ambient and combat music. You know, usually busting out the guitars for the big boss fights. The, the second encounter rather famously used uh, some acoustic tracks from a band called Undercode. Also from Croatia, as I understand it. And they just made for absolutely intense boss fights. Look them up if you get a chance. Anyway, uh... Oh, pardon me, folks. I'm just here to grab your power-ups. Y'all have any guns nearby? That'd be real helpful right about now. Please to be giving me firearms so I can continue my rampage without having to personally mash every single turtle with a sledgehammer. Hey, what's this? Huge cages. I wonder what they're for. Oh, gee, yeah, I wonder. Alright, no. Sometimes the Natrixa entries are kind of funny. Like, they have kind of a the original ones kind of have a dry humor to them. Like, the whole thing about the cannon is that it's firing depleted uranium cannonballs. And they talk about how it's specially shielded to minimize exposure to the material to the operator. 
And then in a subtitle or a uh, footnote below, it says hazards to the target are not considered in the design given the purpose of the device. Just, you know, little things like that. A lot of backpedaling and smacking stuff here. Uh, actually, hang on a second. Mission. Might have been north. Interesting. There's gotta be some place I can get a gun around here. Ah, what the hell was that? Oh god. We have angry plants. There's one of those, uh,. It's one of those uh, evolved Hydra lists in, in uh, StarCraft that can, like, burrow underground and turn it into a turret. Lurkers, thank you. Okay, I got ass <laughs> kicked by a plant. Fantastic. So those things can take a real beating. No, 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 I learned my lesson. <laughs> oh, yeah, those things were bastards. Yeah, we got radioactive stuff around. Sometimes we can use it to our advantage. Unfortunately, not with these here turtles. Oh, thank God, that's a gun. Please don't be locked. Damn it! <laughs> they are very iconic. Like, I love watching those Fight Club videos that this guy Stu puts out. Where he'll just come up with these large matchups between units and RTSs, and we'll have the computer fight it out between them, and you try to guess which ones are. You try to guess who will be the victor. The victor. Sometimes it's just individual units against each other. Sometimes it'll be like actual armies against each other. And it's really kind of fascinating to see how these things work against each other. Sometimes with micro, and sometimes without. Uh, I, I miss... I miss RTS games, I really do. As I've said before, it's not a genre I ever got good at, but... There's something to that kind of progression. Oh, oh god damn it, okay. Okay, I see sunglasses there. There we go, good. We gotta level up, that's good. Still no closer to finding a gun, this is distressing. I mean, there's one right there, if this door would open. So maybe there's a switch we'll have to hit somewhere. Run it out and go places where we haven't killed stuff. Follow the trail of anti-carnage. That's the thing, yeah. In a good RTS, the units will be both tactically distinct and tell you something about the race. They'll be part of the story. Like how in StarCraft, the Marines are all stimmed up and usually guys that they've recruited straight from prison. I see that. What is that? Or the Protoss Dragoons are fallen warriors who have been like housed in these tank shells with spider legs. It does look like a star, yeah, I think it is. Okay, no, we went we came from there. Ah <laughs> Someone didn't put the tiles all the way there. 
Uh, that's fun. Uh, life's little moments. Ah, here we go. I think I'm supposed to go this way. Sam, you need to find a way to extend this bridge. Okay, this is deeply concerning. I don't know why there's, like, half turtles here that look like they've been carved up for steaks. Can I smash these? Why not? Bulge it! Alright. Ow! Take it slow through the minefield. Ow. Fuck you too, crab. You're gonna get yours. Oh god. Bolts, huh? What's this? Akimbo! Thank god! <laughs> I did die once. Alright, let's see how much punishment this stupid plant thing takes. There we go. Alright, what's your story? Flesh-eating plant used to only eat fl flies and small rodents, but the ooze made it larger and larger, and now it feeds on bigger prey, such as children and weak soldiers. If you keep your distance, don't disturb the flower, it won't attack. Alright, interesting. Interesting. Alright, yep. Be careful in the minefield. Alright. Shoot that thing, I see ya. On the other side of this bridge, a new life begins. Very optimistic, Sam. Oh god, they got chainsaws. Hey, they do set off mines. Nice. That is some useful information. Can I get over here? No. Blue key card. Damn it! Okay, must have landed at least one of the aircraft that carries these huge cages nearby. If you could somehow steal one of these, that would certainly make it easier to get to Mount, Ol Mount Olympus. Oh, that's where I'm going. Okay. Scout around the base and see what you can find. I can dig into my databases for some information on how to fly them. The trick so you are a database. This should be instantaneous. Not taking any chances. Anything over here? Hey, here we go. Please to be giving me a shotgun or something. Yes. Oh, what's this? Oh, oh, are we gonna get a ripper? Wow, that is a lot I of. I think meat. we are gonna get a ripper. Oh. That could have gotten nasty, that plant was right there. Alright, let's hit you on the switch and see what it opens. Yes, here we go. 
Slicer! Oh, yes. I'm gonna slice up those gnar bastards. All right. I have no idea what this thing does. I have no idea how it works, but I'm gonna have fun finding out. Let's see. Of course. Oh, shit. All right, so we got a bouncy projectile. Awesome. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> oh, I like it. Alright, I'm gonna guess if we get too close to the blade, we get hurt. We be careful. Hey! Alright. Let's try this bad boy out on something inorganic. So yeah, it seems like this is an ideal weapon for tight quarters. Shotgun. Let's see if we Oh yes, shotgun, thank you. Finally we're getting some hardware. Oh, here we go. Here's a chance. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take you out. Grab these. Oh yes, it does damage through them. Excellent. Damn, I'm out of them. Did you get more blades? Those are fun. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to kite these guys. Sometimes it do be like that. Sometimes you gotta lead that parade of, parade of bad guys in a direction you can survive. Narrowly survive, I should add. Alrighty. Surprises you want to show off, game? Yeah, green key card required. Okay, we still have to pop this thing. And we're low on shotgun ammo. Fantastic. Oh, God. Okay. Stingy with ammo here. Maybe I'm just missing some obvious resupply point. Oh, hey! Bla oh, well, there's some fucking blades right there. Yep, I gotta look around more. Also, I need to break more of these open. Nah, we're talking. Now I'm happy again. It's not a lot, but it'll help. Hey, hey, hey. Not a lot, but enough to thin the herd a bit. All right, almost got through there. Nice. Oof. Last shotgun shell. 
Low on health, somehow surviving. Oh, we're in the guns. Here we go. Oh, hey. Now we're talking. Yay, shotgun shells. Now we're getting somewhere. Are they taking damage? They are, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can lure them into the fan blades, because they're idiots. Fantastic. For the saw blades. Let it never be said that Mental recruits the best and brightest for his invading army. Oop, oop, more, more saw blades. Kick ass. <laughs> Have a slice day. Ha <laughs> ha! Alright. Yeah, where am I even going? Anything else in here? Nay. Looks like that's something we come at from the other side. Rolls up at this door. Ah, of course, malfunctioning. Green key card, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it's gonna be a key card hunt. You know what? I think we'll call it there. I'd rather not press my luck any further. But yeah, that's Serious Sam's Bogus Detour. I quite like it. It's obviously obviously it's basically just a top-down version of Serious Sam with just a few tweaks here and there. But if you're in the market for that, it definitely scratches that particular itch. And I do very much like the series, so yeah, it's a fun little game. We're gonna play more of it when I get time. But yeah, thanks everybody. Every, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Have a good night. Back to Dying Light on Saturday, hopefully to finish it, and see you next time.